Hello Calculus class. So carrying on from this morning, if we look at a circle of radius 1 and we cut a sector out of it, um, then the arc length of what we're left with, uh, arc length is r theta, is just going to be theta since r is 1. And this arc length becomes the circumference of the base of the cone. Uh, so the radius of the cone is going to be such that 2 pi r is equal to theta or r is theta over 2 pi. Now the original radius of the circle is going to become the slant height of the cone so we can use Pythagoras to establish that the height is going to be the square root of 1 minus r squared which is going to be the square root of 1 minus theta over 2 pi squared. So the volume of the cone is going to be 1 third pi r squared h and that in turn is going to be 1 third pi theta over 2 pi squared and then h is 1 minus theta squared over 2 pi squared. We can make life a little bit easier and let p equal 2 pi squared to uh, get, make the denominator simpler. So the volume is then 1 third pi theta squared over p times by the square root of 1 minus theta squared over p. And this is what we're going to have to differentiate to try to find any local extrema. So obviously it's a product first and second. So d vol by d theta is going to be 1 third pi and then it's going to be the first times by the derivative of the second. So that will be half 1 minus theta squared over p to the minus a half times by minus 2 theta over p plus the second times by the derivative of the first. If we deal with the first little bit of the expression, the half and the 2 will cancel out. We've got p squared underneath and we've got uh, theta cubed on the top. So this is going to simplify as 1 third pi into minus theta cubed over p squared uh, and then the root is going to be underneath as well plus 2 theta over p root 1 minus theta squared over p. The easiest way to deal with the square roots is to take the denominator square root and pull it out as a uh, multiplier at the front. In other words, I'll end up with 1 third pi times by 1 over the square root of 1 minus theta squared over p, and that simplifies the left hand side and because we've divided through by the root I've got to multiply through by the root in the right hand side as well and I'm going to be left with 2 theta over p times by just 1 minus theta squared over p without the root. Now it's looking a lot better. Um, there's no way that the initial expression that the multiplier at the front can equal 0. There's no way that that can ever equal 0. So the only place we're going to find zeros is inside the bracket. So tidying the bracket up a little bit, I have minus theta cubed over p squared plus 2 theta over p minus 2 theta cubed over p squared. Or in other words, minus 3 theta cubed over p squared plus 2 theta p over p squared. Now, there's an obvious solution of theta equals zero, and that would certainly work. Uh, that's not very interesting. That means we don't cut anything uh, out of the sector. I mean, I just end up with a very flat circle with no volume. Or the other one is to say that 2p is equal to 3 theta squared. Or in other words, 2 times 2 pi squared is equal to 3 
theta squared or in other words theta squared is equal to 8 pi squared over 3 and this is the solution tidying this up a little bit theta the sector angle that we're going to keep is going to be 2 root 2 pi over root 3 that's about 5 point something radians and when you convert it to degrees you end up with 294 degrees the optimal angle for uh, the sector you need for a cone of maximal volume is 294 degrees or in other words we just take 66 degrees out of the circle at the front uh, thank you and once again thanks for your patience with my uh, haste this morning hope that makes sense thanks <laughs>